Good evening. Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, addressed conference today, worth hearing given it's likely she'll have the keys to the Treasury in a year's time. Here she is in action. Today, I make this commitment to you and to our country. Out of the wreckage of Tory misrule, Labour will restore our economic credibility. We will lift our living standards, make work pay, rebuild our public services, invest in homegrown industries in every corner of our country, and together we will get Britain its future back. Well, let's start with the positives. It won't take long. Firstly, she is a credible politician, a calm, coherent, decent speaker. Compared to her boss, the cervix-free leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, she's Winston Bloody Churchill. And she echoed the aforementioned Churchill when she said this. I must tell you, you cannot tax and spend your way to economic growth. I spat my tea out. At that point, I had to hit the red button on my remote control to make sure I was watching Labour Party conference. But, 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 the rest of it struck me as trivial, a lot of posturing, a lot of hot air. One big announcement was to stop the Prime Minister using a private jet so much. Well, let me say, whoever's in charge at number 10, I want them to travel quickly and safely, not sat on a delayed train eating a mouldy egg and cress sandwich that they've paid seven quid for. This kind of superficial nonsense cheapens our politics. She does, however, pose a good question. Questions people should ask themselves ahead of the next election are simple. Do you and your family feel better off than you did 13 years? If you, like me, believe that it is time to put security first and reject the risk of five more years of chaos and decline, then join us. She's got a point. Do you feel better off after 13 years of Tory rule? I don't, and I've got no doubt you don't either. But she glosses over the small matter of three national lockdowns, which saw the closure of thousands of businesses and the borrowing of half a trillion pounds. Labour share responsibility for this extraordinary economic destruction because they backed it all the way. And to make matters worse, they wanted more. Then there was the predictable snake oil language of creating jobs and investment. Governments don't create jobs, that's communism, and investment is doublespeak for more borrowed billions. When she talked about the government playing a role in de-risking certain investments to encourage the private sector, that sent a shiver down my spine. De-risking, that's you and me underwriting what could be costly and failed projects, like we saw in the 1970s. Which takes me to Labour's Green Revolution and a 1970s-style state-run energy company called Great British Energy, gambling taxpayers' billions on flaky renewables. I was delighted to hear that there will be more police and more nurses. But how are Labour going to pay for that? Well, it seems that the windfall tax and the non-DOM status change will be paying for everything. Every government department will be sharing the spoils, apparently and there'll be enough left over for a brand new pair of flip-flops for Keir Starmer. These marginal taxes are going to be doing more heavy lifting than Arnold Schwarzenegger. The windfall tax is already 75%. Did you know that? What's it going to go to? 80 or 90? Why don't we take all of their money? The bottom line is that windfall taxes are already too high, and we are in partnership with these energy firms to invest in green renewables and to explore new gas and oil resources. All they'll do is take their investment elsewhere. It's a classic Labour strategy, a great headline, but in reality, a race to the bottom. And what about this non-DOM status, stopping wealthy people who are registered as living abroad paying lower taxes here? I hate to break it to the Shadow Chancellor, but these people are very mobile. So this change in status may just bring in a few hundred million by the time we're done with it at which point we've scared off some of the richest people in the world. Do we really want them investing in New York or Paris instead? Do we really want them buying their Rolls Royces in Dubai or Singapore rather than London or Manchester? Like I say, a race to the bottom. If I was in charge, I'd make Britain a haven for rich people. We need their money. 
Just as Rishi Sunak has gained plaudits for slowing down the race to net zero, Labour are speeding it up, reinstating the ban on petrol and diesel cars by 2030, and with no mention of the cost to the government and ordinary Brits of pursuing this unachievable target of zero emissions. Instead, we've been told, by not granting oil and gas licences in the North Sea, which is Labour policy, we will somehow create energy security. That's like saying we're going to feed the family by locking the fridge or bricking up the larder. Well, Labour's green energy policies have got me bricking it. Now, I'm all for a bit of green energy as part of the mix, but if you think that windmills and solar panels will deliver energy security, I can't help you. One last thought. Rachel Reeves is without doubt prudent, but this gives Labour a political problem. The left within their own party and the grassroots well, they'll all be expecting a public sector cash bonanza when they likely win the next election. And they're going to be mightily disappointed, with a probable small majority, I predict, an almost immediate civil war, and a party that Keir Starmer swiftly finds ungovernable. Which is why, dreadful as the Tories have been, Britain simply can't afford a Labour government.